Hello and welcome back. It's the Clay Golem here. We're back in Foundry VTT. This is our Curse of Strahd world and we're continuing building the Death House today. So I have made a couple of little changes since the last video. Um, I put in, there's a couple of places through the building where there are candlesticks. Um, sort of like drawn onto places. So I've just went through and anywhere I could see there was a candlestick. Uh, like on this desk up here, for example. Uh, I've just got to put a light on, a smaller light, but I've just added that on there. So if the party decide they're lighting lanterns, they might not light any of the lamps. But if they do choose to do that, we can just put the lamps on. Um, and if they decide to light the candles, they can light the candles. Nice and easy. Lovely jubbly. Uh, I've also played with the overall lighting. You can see it's much sort of dimmer now than it was before, which is fine. It's just about how I like it, I think. Um, but what I decided to do was these two lights here, I decided that when the party, uh, when they first arrive at this location, I want those lights off. But very quickly, I want those lights to go on, offering this kind of warm glow, this inviting, uh, bear, bear in mind that, close that gate, but that is a gate. So, um, you know, in invitingly warm, come inside, out of the fog, out of the cold, um, out of the dark. Make that nice and inviting for them. And then they can proceed into the house itself. So the house is somewhat sentient. It reminds me a bit of the uh, the house from the Amityville Horror. Um, <laughs> or... Uh, or something like that, or poltergeist, uh, where, where effectively the how whole house is haunted. Um, for those of you of a generation that remember either of those films, um, you'll know how uh, how much of an effect they had, shall we say, on the people uh, witnessing those movies in their uh, formative years. Uh, so we've pretty much finished this floor. Like I say, just um, fiddle with the lights a bit. Um, there, uh, first floor. Okay, so. First floor here, we need to do some work on. Here we go, I've got another little lamp up there. Now, there's, the, the thing I kind of like about the death house is the most of the house itself is not that interesting. In other words, they're moving around the house and there's not a lot to kind of, there's not much in the way of combat and stuff like that, not until they find their way down. So it really does help build some atmosphere and some tension. Um, right, so what we've got going on uh, on this floor, because we didn't talk about this floor before. Um, so this is the, just check them on the first floor, yeah. So this is the upper hall here. Um, so uh, what's going on in the upper hall? Not an awful lot. It does talk about um, suits of armour flanking the walls here. Um, but nothing really happens with those. Red marble staircase, there's a perception check, etc. If I just click my walls on, by the way, um, I did check all my doors and I did, where there are secret doors, I did go and add that on as well. So up up here, that's a secret door. So I have made a couple of little alterations like that as well. And what I ought to say is on the ground floor, uh, where, are, where these are actually windows, I turn them into windows. Because um, what I figured is, what is keeping them in the house is essentially the fog. The house will not let them leave, um, but even if the house does let them leave, the fog won't let them leave. So I thought, well, actually, I'm happy. I, I know I've segued already, haven't I? Blimey, barely got started. If I move Haley in through the house a bit, through the dark, gloomy house. Okay, but Haley can actually open these windows and oh, a little, let a little bit more daylight in. Now, you could say that the windows are barred if you wanted to make sure they can't escape. I haven't. You can go outside. That's great. But the fog is going to stop them going anywhere else anyway. So at this point, yeah, climb out the windows. Go for it. If that's what you want to do, you're not going to get anywhere. You can't really do anything. So uh, it doesn't, you, you know, what's the point in doing that? Um, meh, whatever. But they, they can if they want to. That's what I thought I'd do. Right. Anyway, I got distracted. Uh, okay. So the upper hall here, yeah, there's not an awful lot going on up here, which is fine. Uh, we've got the servants' quarters here uh, with the dumb waiter again. Um, so that's just in this corner over here, which is absolutely fine. Nothing exciting happening here at all. It's just a bit of descriptive stuff. 
we've then got the, uh, the the library here with all of the books so the only thing here there's descriptions etc um, but it does talk about the desk drawer is empty except for an iron key which unlocks a another area so what about that iron key then do I want to create an item for the iron key so that they can actually pocket it um, and carry it with them I think I might do that um, or we could just say that they've got it does it matter one way or the other I'm not sure that it does I don't think I'm gonna bother there you go decision made I think I'm just gonna say that they find a key because they'll know um, and it will all be within one session between them finding the key and needing to use the key that's all gonna happen in the same session so I'm not too worried about them forgetting it um, we then got the secret room up here uh, sort of secret room contains bookshelves packed with tomes etc um, there's a check of things to do but there's also clutched in the skeleton's hand is a letter bearing the seal of Strad von Zarevich so there's a letter here that I want to use so I am going to create myself a tile good old monk's active tile trigger I'm going to create it over here oops be really careful I'll keep doing that yeah because these tiles are so big I've got to be really really careful about accidentally look at the size of the tile it's off to one side I need to be really careful that I'm not accidentally doing what I just did so I'm going to create here a active tile trigger um, I'm going to I am going to add an image if I go into Maps Cursor Strad uh, Tiles and Upload, I have prepared a letter from the Death House. So I'm going to bring that in as my little tile. Not overhead, not animations. Triggers, yes, trigger, active. Um, when, when the DM clicks on this, we've done this before, haven't we? Don't need sight. Allow when paused, absolutely. The actions are going to be, I want to do, 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 show image. There it is, show image. We've done this before. I'm going to select that uh, letter from the death house. Uh, and I'm going to, going to show it to everyone. Create that tile. So when I click this, when I click this, there we go. So all I've done is take that wording, just stuck it on a bit of paper, used a bit of script. They can read this and this becomes a new letter that they have cool beans except we can do something else here let's go to the journal don't know why it said it like that let's go to the party journal and we're going to create a new page um we're going to call it death house letter uh, it was an image create this new page and we're going to again just select that same image lovely jubbly there it is so again they can pull this up whenever they want now configure ownership we're going to say none for everybody all right to start with it's a big fat none I've got to reset this one actually ah Haley was set as observer right these should be default, 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 default. Okay, so anytime they come into the journal, they can now click on that to open it up. But of course, they don't have access to that journal. So what do we want to do? We want to go back to a previous scene. We want to go back to the landing page. Let's activate this. Uh, we want to bring in a new, uh, a new, oops, me and my inability to click we're going to bring this in so again we're going to choose this again I know we've done it several times create and we can lean this up somewhere let's lean it up against this book thing here okay so we've got a new letter there which is great so that is going to let me just reset all of this why is that one not reset because I didn't click the reset button I select, there we go. So part of this reset button, what I need this reset button to do, amongst everything else it's doing, I now want to just say that it's going to 
Uh, oops, show hide. That one there, and we're going to hide it again. Um, and we want to deactivate. Just checking what it's called. So that's deactivating tiles, that's change permissions is what we want. We want to change permissions in the party journal for the death house letter. Change it for everyone back to none. Okay, so when we reset this, that will sort that out. Lovely, nobody can see that. Okay, good. Right, back to... Didn't want to right click that. <laughs> Back to the death house. Ta -da. Now where we've got our... Hey. Bring my levels up, thank you very much. Um, where I've got this token, I've just realised, first of all, one of the things I want to be able to do is this token, I don't want it to be on levels. Uh, is it overhead... Levels, okay. Uh, hang on, hang on. We don't do this very often, so I'm just being cautious. Show even when below. Uh, max elevation, infinite. There we go. I think that's... Uh-oh, I've lost it, haven't I? Hmm. Yeah, if I take it if I take it too high, it, dis it disappears. Right, that, sh that should be fine. Um, because we want to access it, we're on the first floor, so anywhere between 10 and 20 should be fine. Okay, let's just save that, make sure it's still there. Yep, brilliant, still working. Good, because we want to we're gonna be access it when we're on the first floor. Sorry about that, that wasn't particularly smooth, was it? You're used to that, unfortunately. Okay, so <laughs> with these actions, we want to be able to show the image right away. But also, what we want to do is we want to activate uh, and deactivate back to the landing page. We want to, it's not activate, you muppet. Muppet. Close that. What we want to do is we want to show hide this version of the letter and we're going to show it okay so the next time they return to the landing page the letter will be there <gasps> magic so obviously it's not magic but there we go uh, and of course what we want to do is to change permissions oops in the journal for the death house letter for everyone and change them to observer okay so the idea is, is yes, when if they find the secret room, close my levels again. If they find the secret room in here, um, they find the letter. We can just simply click on this. They can read that letter immediately, uh, and then after they've read that letter immediately, they can then uh, any time they then visit. Not configure. I'm all over the place. Uh, back here. That letter is now viewable um, and they can't click on it. Is it because it's not active? Anyone enter? Stupid boy! So, <laughs> allow when paused when anyone clicks on it. Okay, and it is currently active. So again, what I want to do, slight alteration, when we do this reset all, another thing we want to do is to not only hide it, but deactivate this tile. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Back to the death house again, back to this button. Put my levels on so I can access it. Uh, we want to also activate that tile. Gosh, backwards and forwards. If I was pro... <laughs> Yeah, right. Okay, let's activate that. Okay, so when we click on this one, it's going to show it to the players. 
it's going to show them that image. It's also going to reveal that tile back in the landing page. It is going to change permissions for the journal so they can look at it and it's going to activate that tile so that they can click on it in the home page to take them through to the journal. Lovely jubbly. Okay, so that's sorted. Although you're probably like me thinking, Ugh, that's a horrible size. Let's just change that size a bit. There we go. We know what that is. Easy. All right, so where were we? Um, so that's this secret door up here covered what's in there uh, it's just a few rolls and things it does talk about there being some treasure some treasure in here um, now we can do this as item pile or we can do like we did before so let's just uh, if we go back to the ground floor and we said there's a few things to find and we chucked them over here to one side um, so we could stick with doing that method for this which I think I may well do actually uh, just because to keep it consistent. So what can they find? They can find um, Let's go to the SRD Let's find some spells because they are going to find a Scroll of bless uh, Protection from poison There we go, we can stick that out as well they are going to find a scroll of spiritual weapon. Didn't want to double click it, did I? Yeah, new item pile. Thank you very much. Um, and they're going to find some books. Book. There we go. So we can give them... What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to very specifically take this over here. And I'm going to edit this. Because this is uh, three blank books with leather covers worth 25 gold each. Brilliant. They're already worth 25 gold. I like that. Let's stick some books here. We're going to create an item pile of three of them. Lovely. And that way we can just drag and drop them onto characters um, to distribute them however they're going to do it. Which is good. They also find in here the deed to the house, the deed to a windmill and a signed will. Do I want to create separate items for those? I don't think I do. I was looking through the module going, oh yeah, we could. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, how much effort is that for how much gain? Uh, just thinking efficiency, because we don't all have tons and tons of time to spend doing stuff. Uh, I don't think it's going to add anything. Um, I like the letters and stuff like that, but I don't, I'm not going to sit here personally and write out a deed to the house just so that I can put a journal in <laughs> image in there um, or a deed to a windmill uh, and a copy of a will I'm not going to do that uh, they can read the will if they like um, you know and I can just tell them what it contains etc which is fine okay um, and then down here we have the conservatory which again there's nothing particularly interesting here and this is what I mean about one of the things I actually like about the death house is on the entire of this floor there is very little to find except one secret room and, and I, I like that I appreciate the fact that we don't always have to have tons of stuff going on okay let's look at the uh, the next area here so this is the second floor or third floor possibly if you're uh, in the US and that's the way you number them um, and this is the balcony area. So this is where we get our first potential, well, it's not potential, our first actual encounter. Uh, character who climbs on, there is a suit of animated armor here. So notice, uh, I'm going to segue again already, aren't I? Right, look at the images for these. These are suits of armor, right? Now, if I go to the SRD uh, and I go to monsters, and I go animated armor this is what the animated armor looks like so it's not too dissimilar now what you could do is you could put if I hold down shift so I can move exactly where I want you could put your images of these tokens over those suits of armor if this map didn't have the suits of armor on I would do that I would use these token images they're not doing anything I would just have them there to represent the statues uh, and then when they are up here they don't realize it's anything different but actually this suit of armor is 
Come on. He is an animated suit of armour. Come on, go where I want you to. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'm going to not do that. <laughs> I'm going to uh, to actually rotate this. Uh, I bet I've gone the wrong way, haven't I? Of course I've gone the wrong way. And then I've double-clicked the wrong thing again. There we go. So it's kind of, and if I can move it back a little bit. There we go. If I click off of that. There we go. Now the players can't see the um, the health bar there. Just check that. Resources always for owner. Going to show those, but not anything else. So they won't see that. They'll just see the the picture of the animated armor there. Um, that's not going to do anything at all, um, unless they uh, go within five feet of it, and then it will try to beat the absolute snot out of them. Okay, so that's fine. That's all good. Uh, there also is a secret door down here, so I've put that in. Um, lovely jubbly. Uh, it then talks about the master suite. Um, uh, the double doors from this room. Yep, so into here. Dusty panes of glass, etc. So dusty panes of glass set into them. Resembling windmills. Da, 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 da. Uh, and it talks about the fact that get off your walls talks about the fact that we've got the dumb waiter down here in the bottom right hand corner um, and it talks about treasure a jewelry box on the vanity is made of fine silver gold filigree so that's the vanity over here now let me I re I, mm, uh, yeah this is the problem isn't it I don't want to select that big what is that tile Oh, I've got a duplicate. Get rid of that. Okay. <laughs> I've got this uh, quite large trigger tile here, which is a bit larger than I would like. I don't know why it's all the way over this side. What have we done? Now, see, this is the problem, and this is where you need to be really careful, is because we've got tiles layered upon tiles layered upon tiles, uh, it gets quite challenging. It's like, where is... In fact, actually, look, of course... It's on the ground floor. That's why you absolute plank. Um, <laughs> me, not you, obviously. Um, that tile is actually on the ground floor. It's not on the second floor. But the DM view it doesn't, you know, doesn't take that into account. Okay, so we're talking about the vanity over here. Just pretend that didn't happen. Uh, jewelry box, silver gold filigree, uh, three gold rings, thin platinum necklace with the topaz. So let's see if we've got in our here, we can go uh, into our items. Let's see, that's jewelry tools. We've got an arms box. Um, so I've forgotten where I'm looking. Gold rings, three gold rings. Yeah, see, I haven't got those items that I want. So, because they can actually pick these up and stick them in their stash, um, and they are potentially, they might use them for bribes and things later on, I kind of do want to have these. Um, right, so what do I need then? I need three gold rings. So over in my items, let's find a... Uh, 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 uh. Let's just take a ring of swimming. And we're going to edit this down to be what we want. So these rings, uh, three gold rings worth 25 gold each. So I'm going to change that to 25 gold. I'm going to call this a gold, just a gold ring. I can edit out that. Thank you very much. Uh, details, it's going to be, yes, yeah, just going to be a trinket. Attunement not required base item it's not magical we'll get rid of that activation cost none target self da, 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 da. Uh, no effects or anything that should be all fine yeah we haven't got any automation or anything like that on so there we go so we've got gold ring we can come and pop that down there there's three of those let's create an item pile I know I've just moved the item pile somewhere weird, but I'm going to come back to that in a second. Um, necklace. 
And this is going to be a platinum necklace. Um, or... Yeah, they're not great, are they? Um, see, because we've got very much the default stuff here, because we haven't got all of the stuff we pulled in on the other one, I'm like, where's all the good stuff? It's like, yeah, yeah, we haven't got it. <laughs> which, is, which is fine. Absolutely fine. Um, I mean, under trinkets, there's not a better necklace. Do, 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 do. Scrolling through with the clay golem. Okay, that's fine. Let's just let's just take an item. Let's get it done. I can find a different image later. I'm going to uh, edit this one. Whoop, edit this one. Um, so this was worth seven hundred and fifty. This is going to be, um, yeah, necklace with <sighs> topaz pendant, which is great. Get rid of all of that lot. D -d 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 details, it's a trinket, it's not magical. Get rid of that. Effects, none. Fine. Bosh. Didn't change the name. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> okay, so let's open this and we can just drag this straight into here. We've now got one of those as well. Don't know why I've got 13. Quickly change that. Glad I saw that. <laughs> uh, and what else did I say was there? There's a gold filigree. Um, oh, it's a vanity. 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 Yeah, it's not. But let's just choose the box. Um, yeah, and as we saw, there wasn't really one, was there? Um, look, what we've got in containers, what something that looks like a little, we can use this for now. Again, usually I'd spend a lot more time doing this, but I am conscious, you know, you guys are watching a video and how boring if I'm spending hours trying to work out what I'm doing. Uh, it's not very exciting for you, is it? So this is a... Um, it's made of silver, so silver, silver jewelry box, lovely jubbly, uh, description, get rid of that, we don't need it, how much was this worth, it was worth 75 gold, so we slap that in there, um, details, capacity, uh, well, Let's not worry about that, I don't think. We've got it as a container, configure. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just leave it as it is. And we'll stick it in there. That's it. That will do absolutely fine. So these are the things that they will find in here if they want to. So I'm just going to make that item pile invisible. Um, but yes, if they search that, I can just make that visible. They can help themselves. Lovely jubbly. Again, come back and refine it a bit later with some of the images and things. Uh, just don't want to keep you guys watching, getting bored of me arsing around. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, we got the bathroom here. Yeah, not an awful lot going on there. That's all fine. Um, We've then got this storage room. Now, this storage room. Dusty shelves line the walls of this room. A few shelves, folded sheets and blankets. Uh, old bars of soap on them. A cobweb covered broom of animated attack. Well, that's not a thing. Well, I mean, obviously it is in this campaign. But if you go to things like monsters, um, if you can use a brain. There is no broom of animated attack, so how are we going to deal with this? Well, that's fine because I have got the, I've got all of the stat block for it. So if I go to our manage modules now, we while we've got, you know, we've got very relatively very few things installed on here. Um, we're not really using many of them. We've got DD and got the importer. 
<laughs> I can't speak. <laughs> Why do I do videos? But what I want to look at is the 5e stat block importer that we have looked at previously. And if I add that in, take me back to what my active scene. Thank you. Okay. Um, bring up my levels. We're on the second floor. Thank you very much. And if I come back to my uh, DDB stat importer, I now have, oh, I've got several lots of animated armor I accidentally brought in. I can go to the stat block importer, and then in my other window, where I've accidentally messed everything up, I can, <laughs> who would have thunk it? I can copy and paste those details into here. Uh, I'm going to import, and now I need to find a picture. Um, I haven't got one. Um, again, very, very quickly looking for an image in the other window that I absolutely have no problem um, changing out a bit later. I'm going to slap that straight in there here. D&D uh, folder, uh, items, let's stick it in there, choose file. Where did it go? Right. Yes, it's a rubbish image. I mean, it might be fine. I need to get rid of the background. That's the that's the biggest thing, isn't it? Okay. All right. So I have this in here. Has it brought everything in correctly? I suspect it has because generally it's really good. This. Um, needed to be check all these conditions. They look all good. Uh, size small, um, immune to poison. So I, yeah, so that's not surprising. It's a broomstick, multi-attack, animated attack. Yep. So again, because we're not using full automation, I don't need to worry in detail um, about whether these things are working because I'm not automating it. I'm going to be using the stat block on in the other um, on the other page anyway. Um, most likely I just want to make sure I've got these basics right here so that at least I can put it out and hide it again okay, could have changed that image but it's gonna they're gonna see the broom in there they go near it's gonna attack them happy days okay so animated armor and animated broom are the only two things they have to deal with uh, and now we move down into this room here so you see how quick this one is actually to do. Now, okay, I haven't prepared my images for things like the broomstick and stuff like that, but it's actually really easy to put together this particular module because so much of it is just lighting and effects. We've got no sounds in here yet. I will be putting in some creaky floorboards and things. Okay, the nursemaid suite. There's not an awful lot going on here except for... Don't ask. Um... A spectre. Now again, I'm likely to want to find a different image for this spectre. So just so that you're aware, um, it talks about where the spectre came from and stuff. Don't want to go into that. Um, da -da, unless the character's already defeated it, a nursemaid spirit haunts the bedroom as a spectre, manifests and attacks characters who open the doorway to the nursery. So I'm going to, again, hide that. And it's only going to be if players open that door there the spectre will appear and it will attack them okay so it also talks about a secret door which i've put in just here okay that takes them to that staircase which takes them up to the attic okie dokie right so is this one all done um nursemaid suites so talking about bedroom containing blah 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 uh, this is the nursery. Uh, there's actually nothing going on in there at all. So what I'm going to do is, I've turned all the lights off there. I need to turn the lights off here to show that this is kind of ready to go. Second floor, I finished up there. I finished in there. I finished in there. Finished in there. That's another one of those bedside candlesticks. Okay. Good. Happy days. Um, just the attic to do. So I think I'm... And there's, <laughs> look how much light there is in the attic. There's two candles, that's it. Oh, well, it's an attic. I suppose that makes sense. 
So I'm going to uh, stop this video here. Thank you for watching. Do appreciate it. In the next video, obviously, we will be finishing the attic and then start looking at what lies beneath. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Do appreciate it. If you've got any comments, if you think I'm doing anything stupid or you think there's a different way to do it or something you would like to see me try, leave in the comments. Uh, if you don't have anything to say, leave a comment anyway. Why not? And a like. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next one.